Um, all right, so we got a couple of questions here. Um, let's get right into them. Let's do it. Uh, so what inspired you to become an engineer? When I was probably like eight or nine years old, my parents took me to the Duke Energy, Energy Explorium. And I got to go and see how a nuclear power plant was built oh, cool. and what it did. And that was the coolest thing to me because they said, you know, an engineer's built this. And I thought, how neat is that? And that's what inspired me to be an engineer. So what route did you take and what did you study to get to where you are today? My teachers always said I was pretty good at math and science and stuff like that. So naturally they were you know, like, oh, maybe you should do engineering, something like that. So. In school, I just made sure, like high school, I took as many of the AP science courses that I could, advanced science courses. I really liked the chemistry part of it, so I looked for a, a chemical engineering program. I stayed there, I did my master's, and after that, I kind of felt like the the world was my oyster, I guess, because with a chemical engineering degree, you could really kind of do anything. For example, I started off at a beverage company, um, and then I came to a gas utility. Um, both hired chemical engineers, both completely different worlds. What barriers, if any, have you encountered in your career? I have found that the biggest barriers in my career have been ones I put up to myself. The ones that I think in my mind, I thought, I'm not sure if I can do this. Or am I gonna be good at it? I don't know. And there was a lot of time spent and a lot of analysis. I'm like, oh, can I do it? Can I not? And hemming and hawing. When really, I could. It, the biggest barrier was just my own mental hurdle uh -huh. and just jumping in there and doing yeah. it. Yeah, I think, I think I would answer that the same way, kind of um, always just, you know, questioning myself, do I like confidence enough to do, be like, oh yeah, can I do this career? Like, can I do this job? So yeah, I think I kind of feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So what do your friends and family think about your career choice? Oh, they're not, not surprised. <laughs> they're not surprised at all. When I was little, um, I asked my mom if I could, we were at the grocery store and I asked her if I could have a red cabbage because I read somewhere that you could test the pH of different things with a red cabbage. And she just looked at me like, like my kid is nuts. Everybody I talk to is really interested. They, they think it's really cool that I get to do something that could potentially make the world a better place, um, have an influence on the world. And, um, you know, anytime somebody asks, like, you know, just at a party or something, like, how's work going? You know, what are you doing at work? I never had the same answer. I'd, I'd say the same about my family. You, sometimes they're like, I'm not really sure what you do, but you're really happy doing yeah. it. And I know you're making a big difference. And so I, I think that's always, it's always nice to see. Yeah, yeah. How do you think being a woman engineer has shaped your career experience so far? I think it's been exciting. I think it kind of, kind of more emphasizes that just the differences between men and women, like outward confidence. Like men always just typically seem to be more assertive and um, more outgoing and more confident in what they're doing. And I think women, we need to realize that we we are just as capable as, as men are. They just kind of show it a little more and um, we need to have the confidence in ourselves. And I think I've kind of been noticing that more and more. Yeah, I think I think so. There's so much if you when you step back and think of all you've accomplished in your career, you're like, wow, yeah. <laughs> I should be out there saying yes. So it's it's great. Yep. Cool. How is your work changing the industry for the better? Every day. <laughs> every day. We are looking at ways that we can decarbonize our heat mm -hmm. in the Northeast. And I think that is such an exciting thing because I think about what the impact that makes on our you know, on climate change and what that's going to mean for our children and our children's children going on down. So I'm, I'm super excited about what we're doing every day. Yeah, it makes it, you know, exciting to come to work every day. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So actually, so along those lines, then what's been the most exciting and rewarding engineering project that you've worked on? Maybe the most rewarding thing isn't even actually in physically an engineering project. I've been part of creating and now revising um, uh, an RNG renewable natural gas guidance document that the industry is using as kind of a go-to document to utilize. And I think just, you know, being part of something, creating something and now hopefully, you know, making something better that the other utilities in the industry and RNG developers that are working with the utilities can use to implement their own projects. I think that, you know, being a part of that is really awesome and I'm so honored to be able to be a part of it. I think it's, it's so rewarding. So in your experience, then how did the practical world of engineering, how does that compare to your academic side of things? The part that you end up utilizing the most is just the, the, the mindset, you know, thinking like an engineer, problem solving, bringing a certain perspective and viewpoint to different issues and trying to come up with the solutions. Yeah, great. Has your job influenced how you approach other areas of your life? It has, it has. I think um, 
really, I, I think about, um, I have two young daughters, and I, I think a lot about um, some of the, the, the common practices of like problem solving, and what do I do with them, and what do I teach them, but also when they have a problem, like how do we break it down? Because I think it's, it's always important. There are always going to be problems to solve. Mm -hmm. But also, um, it's, it's helped me think about really my purpose. As, as an engineer and what do I need to do because I'm leaving something for them too. Yeah. And I, I think that's that's really been really been helpful. I, I try to teach them to be inquisitive about everything, which is which is nice. It can it's be frustrating to be. too, but it's <laughs> it's nice. I think it's a good way to be. Yeah. When the word innovation is mentioned, who and what comes to mind? I once heard this quote that um, you know Innovation isn't necessarily about solving a problem. It's about having this great idea and then thinking about how you use that to apply to solve the problem. So it's a little right. bit like uh, reversed. And, uh -huh. and I think about that in terms of what we are all trying to do, especially at work every day. It's like, we're, we're yes, we've got all kinds of problems, but we've got this interesting technology. What can we actually do to use that to solve some of the problems that we have? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a neat, a neat way of thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you working on those lines and what or have you worked on that's considered innovative? The majority of my time here at National Grid has been innovative, you know, with uh, RNG projects, um, bringing RNG supplies online, helping other industries reduce their emissions, reduce while also helping to reduce ours. Hydrogen projects, even now the geothermal area that um, I've been working on, which you know, isn't even gas. And I think it's it's all innovative. I think it's all new. I'm so honored to be a part of it and hopefully can, you know, continue to expand it and make it grow uh, going forward. All right, last question I have for you. What innovative technologies or advances in engineering do you find most exciting? I actually find in the whole, how all the different pieces can actually fit together. So I love, for example, take your, to your, your example, we've got RNG, which is our renewable natural gas. How do we think about that in tandem with hydrogen and the gases together, combined with the materials that actually need to deliver those? And then how do we find the right places and the, the social and political aspects mm -hmm. of that where it's best for our customers yep. in those areas and how we can really address the different pieces of what it means for the environment overall. Um, and then you overlay your geothermal piece of that, like you said, which isn't even gas, but it's a new way to deliver heat, which is really exciting. So when you look at all of it together as a whole, I think that's just, it's really, really energizing. And you know, I, I can't wait to see every day what's something new and different that we're doing and thinking about, because that is it. It's like, it's not what's happening next year. It's like, this afternoon, we're going to meet about it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. What else is there? So it's really neat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the last question I have for you is, um, what's one thing that you would tell someone who's looking to pursue a career in engineering? I think no question is ever too silly. I think um, a lot of times we get in our own head of like, oh, is this a silly question? What is everybody else going to think? You know. Uh, meanwhile, five minutes later, no one's even going to remember you asked that question because everyone's thinking about themselves anyways. So um, I think if it's a question that's in your head, um, that means that there's an answer to be found. And once you find the answer, it means that you're continuously learning and you should always be learning. Let your career take you where you want it to go and learn, just just keep learning. Because yeah. it's like, that's that's what drives us to keep, keep solving those problems. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. Cool, thank you. Well, thank you so much for the time. Um, this was good. It's a good experience. We'll talk later. Yes, talk later. <laughs>